All right, so we're expecting snow in a couple days. We're on our way to go pick up another vintage snowmobile. Um, you guys will see it when we get there. I'm gonna try to film, and uh, we'll see if we can get the backstory on it. It's an old one though, and um, I think it's a single cylinder. So we'll see. Should be interesting. It's pretty cool looking, I think. Oh no, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's the sled there. Um, yeah, I don't want to be in the video. Yeah, no, you don't have to be in the video. Just your voice is fine, you know. Just the backstory on it is uh, is good. Looks pretty clean. Yeah, it was actually right with a scorpion. I'm a scorpion collector, so when there's a scorpion sitting there and there's something beside it, I try to buy them too. Huh. Late 60s. That's cool. So were these pretty popular back in the day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they had like 150 different snowmobiles they built. Really? So everybody, the motors are all built by J-Lo Sachs. Um, they had their own thing and then people bought motors and people built sleds. <laughs> um, they had Cats, Skedaddler, Foxtrack, Scorpions, uh, Massey Ferguson, everybody built them. Wow. Does that just come up? Or is there the... Off like that. It's gonna have to come forward and then come off this nut if you want to stay there. there. I can see. I, I don't need to take it all the way off. Yeah, so does that thing need a battery, or how does that work? It's electric start, yep. Okay. They said electric start back then? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's so many of them that I've had that had electric start, and it's actually awesome. Because you pull and you pull and you pull forever to get them off. Yeah. Get them running. Wow. But most of the time, like this one here, I just pushed on that. That cable's got to be put back in the truck. Oh, yeah. There. yeah. Um, this guy... Said he either lost fuel on it or spark, okay. one of the two. But when they spin over, it's either going to be fuel or spark. Okay. <clears throat> so does the exhaust just go right in your face then? Nope, oh, goes right down through the bottom. Okay. So right here's your exhaust off the back of the motor, and it comes right out, and you see. Okay. When you're actually running it in the snow, you'll see it just blow smoke, okay. snow and stuff out. Okay. It always blows it to the ground. Okay, so it doesn't come out through? No. Nope. Okay. No, nope. here's your mouth. All right. <laughs> this here is your carburetor cover, so it doesn't blow gas back in you like a lot of them do. Okay. Did. Very cool. And they had Super Scout, they had Scout 1, they had just different brands of them. This is a Scout 2. Okay. There's your storage compartment. <laughs> How's it? How's the track look? Pretty decent. Yeah, actually decent. If you look through the back, it's not all beat up. I've had worse tracks that I actually ran. Yeah, it's not too bad. I had a '71 uh, ski rule last year. The track had strings hanging out of it, and I ran it all winter. <laughs> never, never had a problem. Wow. So where did you say you found this one? This was locally in Rapids. Okay. Wisconsin Rapids. Okay. And I picked up a few a few scorpions down there. That's where it was. Hmm. You have anything else for sale? That would um, be cool for the channel, you think? Any other snowmobiles? Other or? stuff coming up. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're looking to spend in that. Um, it doesn't matter, really. There's one machine here that I'd like to get a couple grand out of, but it's something you've probably never seen before in your okay. life. Okay, what is it? I can show it to you. Okay. But, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I'll for sure a, take this one, but it was a four wheeler that I picked up, and I was at a swap meet, and the guy, the guy says he had a four wheeler for sale. It intrigues me. I says, "What color?" He didn't know what it was. It was red, mm -hmm. and he kept saying Honda, Honda, Honda. I said, yeah, "I'll look at it." But here it is in late seventies or early seventies. Really? Gear I've never heard of those it's before. Unbelievable. Huh? It's it's something that's probably worth a lot more than a couple grand, but. Can I take a look? Is oh, yeah, yeah, I'll show it to you. I've you never, want. yeah, I'll, t I'll take this one. Okay. But, um, yeah, that'd be cool to look at. I've never even heard of those. All right. 
we got the beast in the back there. The guy was really nice. Uh, he's a he's a collector and collects a bunch of cool vintage um, stuff and got a really nice collection that I'm pre pretty jealous of actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, he gave me a good deal on this thing, 350 bucks. He let me film, which was really nice, and uh, helped me load it. So pretty good deal. Um, he said he doesn't know if it lost spark or what, but he said it shouldn't take too much to run. He thinks it ran a couple of years ago. He got it from a guy that said it should run. So we will see when we get home, we'll start digging into it. We'll see if we can get this thing fired up and uh, able to ride for when the snow comes in a couple days. All right, next morning, let's go check out the sled. Don't check out the other thing yet. That's a different video. Don't look at that. <laughs> this is a 19, I believe it's 1968 Ski Daddler. Scout 2, Super Scout 2. Thing is really clean. Vinny's barking in the background again. He knows what's going on. I mean, look, look at that seat. Really clean. Whole sled looks really nice. No broken pieces in the in the hood here. Got the single cylinder um, engine on it. Take a look in here. Pretty interesting. Looks to be all complete except for the key. Compartment right here. Yeah, super cool. Little bars for the passenger to hold on to. And you've got the pull bar right here. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Definitely a cool machine. Hopefully we can get it running today. So we'll get her off the trailer and uh, start digging into it. I'm excited about this one. This one's in really good shape. And the windshield is perfect. It's got the headlight on it yet. What's this? <laughs> Look at that dipstick. <laughs> that is funny. That is really funny. What's this thing? <laughs> we'll have to see. All right, she's off. <laughs> Looks like a whale, doesn't it? Looks like a white whale. That's what we're gonna call it, the white whale. <laughs> Moby Dick. We made it in the garage here. I need to get one of those dollies. Cause this is getting ridiculous trying to get these in the garage. There it is. Doesn't look too complicated, does it? <laughs> we will see. We'll find out soon enough. That's for electric start right there. I'm guessing. But this thing takes a battery, so we'll see if it cranks over. That'd be something. We'll have to get the hood off first. I think there's a bolt behind here, he said. 
somewhere. But yeah, the white whale. <laughs> A couple lights in the back as well. What does the track look like here? Oh, the track doesn't look that bad. It's a little, little weathered, but all in one piece. Huh. That's just crazy to me. All right, before we start digging into it, I want to get the hood off of here. this out. Check out where the gas tank is. It's built right into it. That is something. That's super weird. Look at that. It's like a big hump. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. Well, I guess we can check it out for rust. See if there's any rust in the tank. Well, it doesn't look like there's any rust. It just looks like old gas. I can't really see all the way into the tank, but it doesn't look like there's any rust down there. So that's a good sign. All right, so we'll just kind of go over the whole thing here. So you've got the, the steering right here, pretty easy. It just goes down to here, pivots right here. And then you can see how it pivots right here, pretty much like a normal sled. Um, you got the gas tank right here. It looks like you have a place for like a car battery right here. You've got the negative terminal, positive terminal. These are some thick wires for that. Looks like you've got the solenoid right there and the big beefy starter right there on it. it doesn't look like you have to use a starter, but it looks like this is just for the starter. That wire is loose right there. That one's not down there. So it looks like this was mounted like that or something. But that's where the battery goes. Exhaust right here. And then it shoots down underneath. See the hole comes out right there. And then here we go, we've got the little tag. It says, what year is that? Model number 58141000. Serial number Y32690. Des Moines, Iowa, 50302. AMF Western Tool Incorporated. Does not have the, the date on here. Huh, where would the date be? Not sure where the where the date would be. We'll continue to look around for it, but yeah, I don't think the seat does the seat come off. I'm sure it does somehow. Feels like it might. But then here's the engine. Right here. Pretty cool engine. You've got the carburetor. And this is like the filter. That shoots down, so no gas gets in your face. That's what the guy was saying. Belt looks pretty good, surprisingly. There's the number for the drive belt, if you guys were wondering. GTS 718. That looks to be in pretty good condition. A little, little rust on it, but that looks like a really nice belt. Let's see if the brake still is working here. Here's the brake right here. Looks like the wire or the cable might be locked up. Or this mechanism is. Yeah, it looks like this mechanism might be a little bit locked up. Might have to let that soak for a bit. <sighs> Engine's not locked up. I did turn it over when I was there. But I didn't want to turn it over too much because I want to get some oil down the spark plug hole. This thing's been sitting for a while, it looks like. 
So yeah, pretty cool sled. Here's the cover. Looks like you just um, pull this mechanism right here in the front and it uh, delatches. It looks like the light gets hooked up right here. And the ignition goes to here as well. We'll have to kind of we'll have to kind of play around with that. But if it's like on any other slide, you can basically remove the ignition. It doesn't really matter. Basically, it's just for shutting it off. So here, here's the ignition wires right here. So we've got black going to it. We've got blue going to it. You've got red going to it. So these must be for the ignition. Switch right, where is it leading to? Oh, right here. Those look a little, a little rough. <laughs> Those look very rough. So we'll see if we can get some spark out of it. And this, yep, that's for electric start. Because these wires lead down to the solenoid. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if this thing cranks over. That would be really, really crazy. But I'm not seeing where these wires... So this one actually looks positive right here. This one's negative. So it's opposite. Because positive's going to the solenoid. Negative would be going to the frame, which that one is. So some of these swapped over the wires, I think. But yeah, this is negative. This is positive. Don't want to mess that up. <laughs> And uh, it doesn't look like any other wires are leading to the positive, so that's strictly for, it looks like, um, just electric start. And then these wires go into the engine right here, go all the way back down here, and in through there. Alright. What kind of plug is in there? D15Y champion plug. she comes. Let's see what the spark plug looks like here. Huh. Look how beefy that spark plug is. It's an old one. Put that back in here. Oh, look who decided to show up. Look who decided to show up. Sniffing it out. <laughs> what do you want, Vin? You coming to check out the white whale? You like it? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> well. We got the uh, the spark plug out here. Let's get some oil down the cylinder. I don't know if this was running two years ago. Seems like it's been sitting longer than that, but maybe not. A little penetrating oil. so I can squirt back by the rings. A little bit more oil. Just really want to coat that cylinder. Give us some hope here. <laughs> All right. Let's go over here and try to pull this thing over. See what it does. So go kind of slow with it. Baby, 
Look at this. I think we have spark. I was not expecting that at all. I thought for sure it would be a no spark situation here. I just saw something blue out of the corner of my eye. Check this out. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. We'll see. Oh yeah. Nice blue spark. That's crazy. Consistent too. That's insane. How are the points still good? <laughs> wow. That is amazing. So we've got spark. It's not, it's not locked up, so we're already doing better than the other one we bought. That's amazing. We're gonna take the spark plug out. I'm gonna continue to just lube this cylinder up a little bit. There's a little resistance to it, which it might be the pull cord. I'm not sure. over pretty good. It's getting easier. All right, I think we're good to go there. I'm not sure if the rings are stuck or not, but I can see the top of the piston. We don't have a hole in the piston or anything like that. So we're good there. We've got spark. So let's now hook up a battery to it and just see if this electric start would work. Positive and negative over here. I hope. All right, here we go. Push the button. It was starting to work. Twitch is looking a little bit rough. It's not actually spinning the engine though. The motor's gone, but it wasn't spinning the engine. You can hear it just spin the. It's not grabbing anything. So, electric start does work, it's just not grabbing. We'll have to dig into that further later. But it's crazy that it actually works. That all, all the connections were fine. <laughs> That's just crazy. All right, I think next thing we're gonna do is just check for compression. Um, I wanna make sure there's enough to start it up. And then we'll start looking at the carburetor. So here's the carburetor on it. Um, he said that this line just needs to be put back in to there. So he broke that off. We can put that back in. Um, but here is the gas line going into the carburetor. And here's the pulser or um, vacuum line coming from the engine. So those both look good. Pretty simple design. Um, I like that it's right, nice and close to the engine right there. There's that line. And then this one just goes, I think, back to the tank right here. So that's pretty simple as well. That looks like it might be clogged. But that's pretty simple, you just unplug that from that nipple right in there, and we can clear that out. But we'll have to see if this tank can hold gas and oil. Um, it's kind of hard to see down in there. We might have to take this, this guy off right here. I had to get my biggest fitting out on my uh, compression tester kit. Look how big that guy is. <laughs> that's gonna fit right in here. Let's see if get this one.
Hopefully it's not too long. Let's see, it'll go slow with the cord. Let's see if it hits the piston. Nope. All right, we'll attach this to it. All right, then we'll see what kind of reading we get. We're looking for like over 100 is fine until those rings probably free up. So let's see here. We really can't do throttle open unless I hold this thing open. I guess I can. Oh, shot up over 100. Sweet. Oh, that's good compression. That's a really good compression. We're at 160. With just a couple pulls. That is awesome compression. We've got spark, we've got compression. All we need is fuel. So let's start working on that next. In order to see in the tank right here, I believe this needs to come off. Again, I haven't worked on a snowmobile like this before, so um, everything's new to me. <laughs> Probably need the heat gun out just to heat that up and get that off of here. I don't want to break the tank or something. All right, we got the heat gun out here. Start heating this thing up. Take the cap off so we don't fill the tank up. <laughs> just kind of heating this rubber up here. Feels pretty hardened up. not be coming off. Hmm, then he doesn't like the heat gun. It's getting loosened up here. You can see it. It's coming. There we go. But here's that piece. That's for Checking. So we got one fourth, one half, three fourths. And you're gonna go back in your cage, buddy. And you've got this line in there. Looks like it can be pretty rusty in there. Now that I'm looking at it, hopefully it's not too bad. Ooh, she's a little crusty in there. Oh yeah, she's pretty crusty. That's not good. That's not good. It's not as bad as the other one that we had, but it's not too great. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try to get this piece off. I moved it, but I just wanna see if we can get this thing out. So I'm guessing that's where like a filter is and everything. It just kinda dips down into the tank. Don't wanna break anything off. Looks like there's actually gas in it. Coming out. It's probably the bottom of the tank, right? Close to it. She's a little rough. Yeah, there's no way that would be getting anything through there. I'm curious to see where the bottom of the tank is. A tiny line coming down from it. But it does have a nipple, so it must, must have lost a line going down into the tank. You know, because this is supposed to have a line going down further into the tank, and that was gone. So I wonder if that was the problem. 
why it lost fuel. Definitely could have been. All right, let's siphon some of this out of here. If we can. Looks red. Hmm. That's interesting. You can see coming out of it, it's just completely red. So I think it's just pre-mix in there. Unless it's just like really rusty stuff coming out. A lot in there. Bunch of foam. All right, we got all the gas out of the tank. Let's clean this guy out. Like I said before, ooh, that's pretty clogged. This end was supposed to have a tube going down into the gas so it could suck it up and put it to the carburetor. That line must have fallen off inside the gas tank. And that's why it wasn't getting fuel. And um, the gas would have to be completely filled up, the gas tank, for that to work. So, or pretty close to being completely filled up. I think that's why the guy must have put it away and, you know, thought maybe it was a problem with the fuel. And really, I guess it was, it was just missing that line. So it couldn't get any fuel. All right, we got this all cleared out. Got the threads cleaned up, so it's looking pretty good. All right, now I want to blow from this gas line back to here, to the carburetor, so it goes down here. So let's unhook that from the carburetor. This looks like that might just come right off. There we go. Grab this line here, blow through it, hopefully it blows through. <laughs> Something was clogging at first, you could hear a pop. Like that. It's blowing all the way through now. All right, we should be good. Blowing all the way through. What popped out of there? Oh, look at all that gunk coming out. <laughs> Gross, what is that? Maybe we'll spray a little. WD-40 through it and blow it out again. All right, because this was missing the line, we've got a new one right here. Just gonna put that guy on there, like that, and that's gonna go down into the tank and suck up that gas for us. So we can reinstall that. So this can go down here. There, that should be all good. Now we just have to fill up this tank with some premix and uh, see if it pulls gas through that line.
All right, let's see if this gas line's pumping. What I might do is quick take off this air filter mechanism. Might have to put a little gas directly down the carb, get things moving. Clean. No grime in there. You can see the throttle is supposed to be back here, and the choke is supposed to be right here. I don't see a choke lever anywhere, but I mean you can just use your hand. Not a big deal. Let's try to get this fixed. I have to get that wire back in there. It looks like it might not be long enough. <laughs> we'll see. All right, I might have to get a new wire on there, but for now, it is working. At least we have a little bit of throttle. It's barely holding on though. And then the choke is right there. We can just do that by hand. Carb looks pretty clean in there. So let's just dump some gas in there and see if she fires up. All right, we officially have spark. We have compression. Let's see if we can get gas to it. We're going to manually put some down the carburetor here. Let's see if we can get this gas to pump from the tank. So far, no luck. Didn't look like it was pumping any gas, but she runs. 
That is awesome. Let's see. The gas is getting sucked up through the line. Might need to be primed a little bit more. Let's prime it a little bit more. That's just crazy that this thing started after, how many years is that? Like 68 to 2022? That's a lot of years. We'll prime the line a little bit more here. We might have to open up the carburetor. Let's see if she fires up now. She's, she's not staying running. So I'm guessing the diaphragm and the carb is either bad or just needs to be lubricated with some gas to get to, uh, to where it's flexible so it can pump. I believe it's one of these two right here. Hmm. The only other thing I can think of is if our line for the gas tank isn't long enough, but I'm assuming it is, because I can see gas all the way up to here. So I'm guessing that line's long enough going in. No idling. All right, it's for sure pumping. It was idling for a long, long time. So I think the carburetor is probably just a little bit dirty. We're gonna keep on running gas through it and hopefully it'll clean itself out. Cause I'm afraid if I tear into that carburetor, it's gonna ruin all those gaskets in there. And I'd like to ride it today. And as long as I kept my thumb on the throttle, we were, we were golden. All right, for some reason the pull start is only pulling out to there. I'm getting stuck. It's only pulling out right there. It's getting stuck by something. So let's just tear into this. See why that's happening. You can see. Must have been a the ground there. It's backfiring pretty good now. When I pull it over, it just pops. It goes boom. So I think we're getting too much fuel now.
right, we got this off. It must be something in here binding this thing up. As you can see, it can only pull. I don't want to go in there with it. Right there. And it stops. All right, we're gonna open this guy up. See what's going on. Hopefully when I take off this cover, it doesn't fling in my face. Okay. You wouldn't think it would be spring-loaded underneath the cover, would you? That to happen. Oops. Put that in the center there. Plate should come off. Oh boy. I don't really want to take this off. The spring is right underneath there. Oh, I can see where it's hitting the cable right here. The cable is frayed in there. It's like stuck. I can just wind it enough the other way I can unstick it I think. really stuck in there. Might have to just take this off. I don't want to take off the winding though. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so I decided to leave that alone. Um, if I take it out, that spring is going to uncoil and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to uh, get it coiled back. And um, I don't know if they sell parts for these, so I'm just gonna leave it like that and uh, we're gonna try starting it up like that. I just don't wanna do something, break apart, and then not be able to replace a part. All right, so now it won't start back up. I'm thinking maybe a full plug. Here's the old plug. We just went to O'Reilly's and picked up the new one. Apparently they had the same plug, so that was good. Fires up. It was back firing really bad and not firing. So I'm thinking maybe the oil and everything I put in there it fouled off the plug. It was still sparking good. We'll see if it works now here. It was just backfiring so much I was thinking it's gotta be the plug. So let's try starting it up now. See if she fires. All right, I think it has to do with that pull cord being too short. Um, so we're gonna try to take off the starter right here and see what's going on with that. Just a bolt right here, I think one underneath there. And we can pull that out, hopefully. Looks like you might have to take off the clutch.
Looks like we have to take off the brake in order to get that out. All right, we got the starter out, so I'm guessing that's not springing up. It's just like a boat starter where it's got a spring and then that shoots up and then grabs the gear. So I'm guessing it's not doing that. So when we hook up the battery, that should jump up. Let's see what happens. See, it's not jumping up at all. Just staying in place. See, that should come up. It's not doing it. I don't know why, but it's not doing it. Be a little lubrication down there. I don't know why that's not doing it. It's just weird. All right, I got her loosened up a bit. Let's see if she shoots up now. Oh yeah. See that? See that shoot up like that? That's how that's supposed to be working. All right, now let's try this electric start. See if this works. So ground is to red. Here we go. <laughs> I get the pull up again. It's not working. Hmm. Oh, that's why. We don't have it hooked up right here. <laughs> Duh. Let's try this again. Let's see what happens. Will it turn over? That's pretty sweet. That's working great. Now we just have to get some fuel in here. All right, let's see if it fires up. choke it out to shut it off. 
But uh, yeah, I think we might try to hook up a battery here. And um, just so we have electric start, let's try it. She's not moving now. So the clutch is grabbing. It's not spinning the track. Ah, uh, I see. So the wheels that spin the track are right in there. See how they're supposed to grab? These are supposed to have like little knobs on it grab the track and they're both completely bald so that's why it doesn't move see that they're all bald in there they're supposed to have teeth on there to grab that track that's why it's not moving but um, yeah it runs great it just we need new wheels right there to make this thing move <laughs> that sucks so now we know why it was cheap, right? <laughs> yeah, those wheels right there are the problem. If you guys remember my last snowmobile video, I showed you the underside of it, and these things had big knobs coming off of the wheels. And uh, yeah, those are completely gone. So that would be the reason. They're supposed to look like this in the back. Right here. Like this. See those big teeth on there? Those are completely worn down. So, this thing will not be moving today. <laughs> oh, we moved a little bit at least. We got to drive it and uh, starts right back up. Let's see if we can crank it. If it starts right back up. Running great. Oh, there it's moving a little bit.
guy just moved. <laughs> Idle, idle all day. That really sucks. Well, she's not going to move today, unfortunately. Those wheels are just completely worn down. So we'll have to get new wheels. I don't know where they even sell those, um, if they even do. But uh, I'm sure you have to find like a parts sled. Maybe the guy I bought it from has some spares we can, we can get from him. But yeah, those are completely worn down. But she runs great, idles great. She'll idle all day. She revs out completely. So if those wheels were good, we would have been set. I should have checked those when I bought it. Completely forgot about that. So, yeah, that's the video on the Ski Daddler. Hope you guys enjoyed the process. It was definitely a project getting it running right. And uh, it's always fun messing with the fuel issues. But we finally got to go and turned out pretty good. Except for the no moving part. <laughs> Anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out. Oh.